Hi everyone, and welcome to Pre-Algebra 7, BCPS TV style. I'm Mr. Parker, and I'll be your host as we work through today's lesson, which is all about how people use data to make inferences. Let's say you had a big question about learning in BCPS, and you wanted to know what every student in the district thought about it. How much work do you think it would take to ask all 115,000 students? This video will guide us through some ideas about how people use samples to reduce work and make the accurate judgments about the data. Today's lesson will cover these objectives, which are the same as week three of the Pre-Algebra 7 BCPS Remote Learning Packet, which is the week of April 20th. Students will determine if generalizations made about a population from a sample are valid, and use data collected from a random sample to make inferences about a population. Our first objective is to determine if generalizations made about a population from a sample are valid. There's some important vocabulary in there, so let's look at some examples and some other vocabulary before we dive into our determinations. The Baltimore County Public Library is going to buy 600 new books this month. In order to figure out how many of each genre to buy, they want to know what the people in Baltimore County would like to read. There are about 800,000 residents in the county that can borrow books from the Baltimore County Public Libraries. How can we get information from that many people to decide which types of books to buy? It wouldn't be easy to ask all 800,000 Baltimore County residents which types of books they'd like the library to buy. So in order to make this task easier, a survey might be a helpful tool. But first, we need to learn some vocabulary. A population is the whole group being studied. In this case, that's the 800,000 residents of Baltimore County. A sample is part of a population. For our example, that would be any group of people that lives in Baltimore County. Rather than ask all 800,000 Baltimore County residents which types of books they'd like to buy, the library could ask a sample of that population and make their decision based on that. It would be a lot less work, but there are some important things to keep in mind when asking only some of the people about making a decision for everyone. We want to make sure that our sample is random and not biased. A random sample is a sample in which each member of the population has an equal chance of being chosen. A biased sample is a sample that does not truly represent a population. An example of a biased sample might be asking only adults which new books the library should buy. Those answers might be different than if, we, if the survey included elementary, middle, and high school students as well. Here are three options for Baltimore County Public Libraries to choose for their book survey. In option A, each library employee would ask 10 friends which types of books they want the library to buy. Option B, they would randomly select 100 BCPS middle schoolers to survey. And option C, they would have a computer select 100 people to ask from a residency database. Which option do you think they should choose? Likely, you chose option C. Have a computer select 100 people from a residency database to ask. What's so special about that option? Why might options A and B not be as great? Well, in option A, library friends might not be in the population. So if you had friends that lived in Hartford County or Cecil County or Carroll County or Baltimore City, those people are not included in the population because we are only surveying or we are only interested in the population of Baltimore County residents. In option B, it's only asking students of a certain age, middle schoolers. So it doesn't represent the population as a whole. There are a lot more than middle schoolers in that 800,000 people that live in Baltimore County. Option C gives us a random sample and would be the most accurate for making our predictions. What if your job was to figure out how many calories there are in a trail mix? What you would want to do is take a random sample of this trail mix and test it and see how many calories were in each bite. If you were to take a random sample, you would grab a little bit from each area, maybe some from here, and then a little bit from here, and then this last little bit right there. Here, I have a sample, which is a little bit of the entire population, which was the whole plate of trail mix, and I can test this little bit and tell me how many, to tell me how many calories are in a bite of trail mix. Now, if I had not taken a random sample, if I had just grabbed from this side of the plate right here, 
There were a lot of candy pieces in that piece of the trail mix. I don't know why they all shifted to the right side of the plate, but they did. This sample would be biased because it does not represent the entire trail mix. It's time to show what you know. Roberto wants to know the favorite sport of adults in his hometown. He surveyed 50 adults at a baseball game. What is the population, and is the sample biased or random? If you answered that the population is adults in his hometown, you're well on your way to accomplishing the first objective for this lesson. The sample is biased. So why is the sample biased? In this case, Roberto asked adults at a baseball game. So not every adult in Roberto's hometown has the same chance of being picked. Because if you weren't at the baseball game, you have no chance of being picked. Let's look at another example. Paula wants to know the favorite type of music for students in her class. She puts the name of all the students in a hat, draws eight names, and surveys those students. What is the population and is the sample biased or random? Hopefully, for this one, you recognize that the population is the students, oh, the students in her class. And maybe you realize that the sample here is random because each student has the exact same chance of being picked. Once all those names are in the hat, everybody has the same chance. Our second objective is to use data collected from a random sample to make inferences about a population. So it's very important that if you're going to use a survey that you use a random sampling method like we've discussed. And once you do that, then you can start to make some conjectures, some inferences about the population as a whole. So going back to our example with the Baltimore County Library, they were going to buy 600 new books and they were trying to determine which genres to buy. So let's say they selected a random sample of 100 residents from the 800,000 Baltimore County residents and got the results in the table below. Anime graphic novels got 42 votes, nonfiction got 25 votes, 18 votes for mysteries, and 15 votes for science fiction. How many of each genre should the library buy? We'll take a look at the anime books. In the survey of 100 people, 42 had selected anime. We can draw a double no number line to figure out exactly how many anime books to buy. By extending the number line, we can count by 42s on the top number line and by 100s on the bottom number line until we reach 600 total books, when we can see that 252 anime books should be bought. Another strategy is to create a proportion. We can solve this proportion by recognizing that 600 is 6 times larger than 100. So 42 times 6 is 252 anime books that should be purchased. Now you can try. A shipment to a warehouse consists of 3,500 MP3 players. The manager chooses a random sample of 50 MP3 players and finds that 3 are defective. How many MP3 players in the shipment are likely to be defective? You can use this. You can solve this problem using a double number line or using a proportion. I'm going to use a proportion for this one and show you how we use that. And then you can try it on your own and see if you can use a double number line to solve it and get the same answer. So here is a potential solution. And before we talk about the potential solution, it's really important to talk about does even making a proportion even make sense here? Well, it says that it's a random sample, so I feel confident that our prediction should be reasonably accurate, and it is reasonable to make a prediction because it is a random sample and not a biased sample. So here is a proportion that has been set up, 3 divided by 50, because 3 are defective out of the 50 MP3 players. It's really important that when you think about your proportion, that you think about the units and think about setting up your proportion so that like things are in like places. So our numerator represents the number of defective MP3 players, and the denominator represents the total number of MP3 players. On the left side, hand side of the equal sign, that fraction represents the sample 
so three defective out of 50 in the sample and the right side of our proportion represents the total population of 3,500 mp3 players now we don't know how many out of that entire population are defective and that's what we're going to try and find out that's why we're letting x represent the number of defective mp3 players in the entire population so once we have set up our proportion we have to decide how much larger the denominator is on the right hand side than the left hand side and in this case it is 70 times larger so i would expect 70 times more defective mp3 players in the population than in the sample so you can see in the work that 3 times 70 tells us the number of defective mp3 players in the population which in this case is 210. do you think you could show the same thing on a double number line or in a ratio table Let's try it with visual data. The number of pets owned by a random sample of students at Lansdowne Middle School is displayed in the box plot. What are some inferences we can make based on this box plot? Some things that I have noticed are that 50% of the students at LMS have between zero and three pets. Because this is a box plot, I know that each quartile represents 25%, so these two quartiles together represent 50%. Oops. We can also see that more than 75% of students have at least one pet. So here represents 75% of the data. And since that 75% starts right here at two pets, I know that at least 75% of the students have at least one pet. So that's just a couple of examples of inferences that I can make from this visual data. Let's try another visual. What are some conclusions you can draw about the number of miles jogged daily by this random sample of gym members? Did your answer involve percentages? Did you say something like, the middle 50% jogged between five and a half miles and seven and a half miles daily. That would be represented by this group right here, the box. Did you say that not many gym members jogged more than seven and a half miles daily? Those are two reasonable conclusions that you can get from this data. Let's try one more example. In a random sample, three of 400 computer chips are defective. Based on the sample, how many chips out of 12,000 would you expect to be defective? Now, that may not have been enough time to completely solve the problem. A little tough to do this through the TV, but that's okay. We'll give it a shot. How did you solve the problem? How did you start? Did you draw a double number line, a proportion, a ratio table? If you did it correctly, you should have gotten about 90 defective computer chips. If you did, you've accomplished the second outcome for this week. Congratulations. Thanks for joining pre-algebra this week. Here are some math photos from my week that you might enjoy. A picture of some fiddleheads from a hike at Gunpowder Park and some spiral art my family created. Stay safe and wash your hands. Stay tuned for directions on accessing the print resources at home. These directions are provided to show you how to access the print materials. First, go to www.bcps.org. Once you've accessed Baltimore County Public Schools website, select the Coronavirus COVID-19 Updates link at the top of the page. Scroll and select Student Learning Resources. Scroll and select Middle and High School Secondary Resources. This will take you to a set of file folders that contain the print resources for secondary subject areas. Select Secondary Mathematics, April 6th to 24th, 
and this will provide you with all of the print materials for the secondary mathematics courses. Thank you.